Hello, welcome to the channel. Today, I would like to share a story with you about a young lady. Let's begin. Finding work was difficult when I left school. Nobody seems to be interested in hiring an unqualified girl. I had become weary of submitting resumes in response to job postings online. I once came across an advertisement for a job that wasn't all that appealing, but I really needed the money. They were looking for a babysitter to watch three young children, according to the advertisement. It stated that no qualifications were required. Simply a young, responsible, and attractive person was needed. When I called the number, a woman with a pleasant voice answered the phone. She immediately hired me after I informed her that I had called regarding the babysitting position. She stated she needed me to start right away and didn't even want to meet me in person first. I was thrilled. I drove to the residence the following morning to meet the family. As soon as I arrived, I could see that the house was lovely on the interior as well as the outside. The rich nature of the family was evident. With wide smiles on their faces, the woman and her husband welcomed me and introduced me to their kids. There was one girl and two boys. Kiera was four years old, TJ was five, and Samuel was six. The children appeared to be polite joyful and sociable. They never argued, they never made a mess, and they were always courteous. They only played by themselves or read books. The parents announced that they were going out to dinner and wouldn't be home until late that night. They told me that the kids had already been fed, so all I had to do was get them ready for bed. The mother gave me a phone number and told me to call her if there was an emergency. The father told me to make myself at home, and if I was hungry, I could take whatever I wanted from the refrigerator. After their parents had left, the children sat on the sofa to watch television. They were quite silent and hardly said anything. I was getting hungry during a commercial, so I walked into the kitchen to get myself a snack. I couldn't help but notice two enormous jars stuffed in the back of the refrigerator as I was rummaging through it. Both were wrapped in basic brown paper with a rubber band around the rim. I was curious as to what was in them. Curiosity got the best of me. So I took one of the jars and pulled back the brown wrapping to have a better look. It was filled with lengthy strips of fatty beef suspended in a murky red liquid. I couldn't tell what type of meat it was, but it wasn't pork or beef. I was going to return the jar to its original location when I heard a disturbance behind me. I was so surprised that I hit my head on the shelf above me. Samuel was standing in the doorway, staring at me as I turned around. Put that back, he commanded. That's not for you, he said. My spine tingled at the way he looked at me and the way he spoke. I'm sorry. I simply was looking for something to eat. Samuel remained silent. He simply stood there and looked at me. I put back the container inside the fridge and closed the door. After turning around, Samuel went back into the living room. I also went back to the living room to watch cartoons with the kids because I had lost my appetite. When the cartoons ended and the news came on, I was trying not to let my imagination run wild. There was a report concerning a missing adolescent girl. The cops discovered her decomposing head in a dumpster. They claimed to have no idea what happened to the rest of her. I changed the station and told the kids it was time for bed because I was scared the horrific news report might upset them. I walked back downstairs because I was bored and had nothing to do, so I decided to watch a movie. I searched the family's DVD collection, but all I found were cartoons and Disney flicks. I wasn't in the mood for any more kid-related activities. I discovered some old Vaptus tapes on the bottom shelf. One of them had an unusual title. M Girls was the title. This was intriguing, so I started to investigate. I inserted the cassette into the VCR and hit play then sat on the sofa and made myself at home while the video began. The kids made no complaints. 
They simply strolled up the stairs in single file to their bedroom. I changed them into pajamas and got them ready for bed. Then I tucked them all in, kissed them goodnight, and turned off the lights. The fact that it was a home video was the first thing I noticed. It's likely that the family taped it themselves. The parents and children were all laughing and appeared to be having a good time. I was going to turn it off when I noticed another person in the video. It was a young lady, maybe in her late teens. She appeared to be the former babysitter. She appeared to be quite familiar. I thought I recognized her from somewhere. Maybe she went to my school. Then it finally hit me. Oh my goodness, I pondered. It was the missing girl mentioned in the news. My hands were trembling. My entire body trembled. I really wanted to get out of there as quickly as I could. I jumped out of my chair, ejected the video, and replaced it in its case. I then remembered the jars in the fridge. I needed to know what was in those jars. I went to the kitchen and opened the refrigerator with a shutter. Maybe I'm overreacting, I reasoned. I reached out and took the second jar. I could see large, pale hunks of meat and strips of fat floating in the scarlet liquid as I peeled aside the brown paper wrapping. Some of the meat appeared to have skin on it, human skin. I could also see what appeared to be hair strands, human hair, lengthy hair. I was so terrified that I thought I was going to pee my pants. I removed the rubber band that was holding the jar shut and glanced inside. An eyeball was staring back at me. I dropped the jar, horrified, and it smashed on the kitchen floor. I dashed into the living room, grabbed the videotape, and jammed it into my pocket. Samuel was standing at the bottom of the stairs when I entered the hallway. Where are you going? He inquired. I, I just, I just remembered... I mumbled. I forgot something. I need to go home and get it. I'll be back in a few moments. The other siblings ran down the stairs. You can't go, exclaimed Kiera. You can't leave us on our own. I'm calling our parents, Kiera exclaimed as she grabbed up the phone and dialed numbers. Samuel snatched my leg and wouldn't let go. You have to stay, exclaimed he. We're really hungry. His grip was quite firm, but I shook him off and dashed out the front door. Their parents had just got home. They had an indignant expression on their faces. The children were on the doorstep, screaming and crying. The mother and father got out of their car, and they came running over. There was an angry look on their faces. What's wrong? They shouted. Where are you going? Come back here. I didn't answer. I just turned the key the ignition and revved the engine. They started banging on the windows. I floored the accelerator and tore out of there like a bat out of hell and never looked back. I didn't stop until I came to the police station. I told the police officers everything I knew and handed over the videotape as evidence. The police immediately dispatched two patrol cars. By the time they arrived at the house... The parents and children were gone. They just took their car and disappeared. The police searched the house and found the jars in the refrigerator. They also found human flesh and bones in the basement. They did tests and confirmed that these were the remains of the missing girl. They never managed to track down the parents or the children. They're still out there somewhere, probably living under a different name, probably still on the hunt, for new victims. You have come to the end of this video. Please like, subscribe, and share.